Hey guys, today we are doing a January staple. We are doing my most anticipated fantasy releases of 2022. Let's jump straight in in chronological order. So my first book that is coming out this year that I am super pumped for is Age of Ash by Daniel Abraham. So for those of you who have been following the channel, you will know that I love Daniel Abraham. I love the Long Price Quartet, which is up here. Um, it's a wonderful uh, series of books. It's just absolutely incredibly done. It is absolutely mind-blowing for me how I've not read this series sooner. I only read it for the first time in 2021 and I absolutely adored it. I'm hoping to get to his other series, The Dagger and the Coin, soon, but I am super pumped for Age of Ash. This is book one in the Kithamar series. And I'm going to read you the blurb for it right now. Kithamar is a centre of trade and wealth, an ancient city with a long, bloody history where countless thousands live and their stories unfold. This is Alice's. When her brother is murdered, a petty thief from the slums of Longhill sets out to discover who killed him and why. But the more she discovers about him, the more she learns about herself. And the truth she finds are more dangerous than knives. Swept up in an intrigue as deep as the roots of Kithamar, where the secrets of the lowest born can sometimes topple thrones, the story Alice chooses will have the power to change everything. This sounds super exciting. I just want more Daniel Abraham in my life. I am super pumped for this coming out and it is coming out on the 15th of February, so not far away. My next anticipated releases actually both come out on the same day, apparently, so far. Their release dates are the 15th of March and the first one of those I'm gonna talk about is the Kaiju Preservation Society. This is by John Scalzi. Now, I have read a little bit of Scalzi in the past. I read Red Shirts and I did enjoy it. I thought it was good. However, the main thing drawing me to this book is actually the blurb, is the description of it. It sounds super interesting, super fun, a bit wacky and a bit out there, but definitely uh, sounds like a great time. Let me read the blurb for you on this one. When COVID-19 sweeps through New York, Jamie Gray is stuck as a dead end driver for food delivery apps. That is, until Jamie makes a delivery to an old acquaintance, Tom, who works at what he calls an animal rights organisation. Tom's team needs a last minute grunt to handle things on their next field visit. Jamie, eager to do anything, immediately signs on. What Tom doesn't tell Jamie is that the animals his team cares for are not here on Earth. Not our Earth, at least. In an alternative dimension, massive dinosaur-like creatures named Kaiju roam a warm and human-free world. They're the universe's large and most dangerous panda, and they're in trouble. It's not just the Kaiju Preservation Society that's found its way to the alternate world. Others have too, and their carelessness could cause millions back on our Earth to die. Now, if that's not a fun description of a book, I don't know what is. Like, it's got this our world, alternate world thing going on. And it just sounds like a fun time. It doesn't sound like it's going to be groundbreaking. It doesn't sound like it's going to break fantasy but it just sounds like a really interesting fun read and i am really looking forward to it the other book that is coming out on the 15th of march apparently is ogres by adrian tchaikovsky now that again those of you following the channel will know that tchaikovsky is a favorite author of mine i've read many many of his books this past year in 2021 and i have loved so so many of them again ogres is going to be a short book apparently only 144 pages so it's going to be basically novella length tchaikovsky does tend to do really well with novellas though there are multiple novellas i've read of his that i like to varying degrees but he does tend to build worlds really well considering short pages time. Again, let me give you the description of this one. Ogres are bigger than you. Ogres are stronger than you. Ogres rule the world. It's always idyllic in the village until the landlord comes to call. Because the landlord is an ogre, and ogres rule the world with their size and strength and appetites. It's always been that way. It's the natural order of the world, and they only eat people sometimes. But when the headman's son Torkel dares lift his hand against the landlord's son, he sets himself on a path to learn the terrible truth about the ogres and about the dark sciences that ensured their rule. Again, really like the concept of this book. This is high up there because it's a Tchaikovsky book and I love him as an author, but also I like the concept. I like this idea of 
taking a fantastical, relatively standard creature in fantasy and doing something different with it, building a different world with it and approaching it in a slightly different way. And I'm looking forward to seeing how Tchaikovsky explores this in just 144 pages. Next up is a book coming out on the 12th of April. And this is a book I have already pre-ordered a signed edition of. It is probably the book I am most excited for in 2022 as a new release. This is The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is book two of the Blood Sworn Saga and The Shadow of the Gods book one that came out last year was one of my favourite books last year. It was a five star read. I absolutely adored it. It is John Gwynn at peak performance. Um, I cannot speak highly enough. It is the best first book of a series he's written. It's also one of the better books he's written. It's just so, so good. It introduces us to some wonderful characters and I'm really, really, really excited to see how it goes. It ended with a massive bang and I am so pumped for The Hunger of the Gods. It is going to be an absolutely wild ride, I am sure. And if you have not read any John Gwynn, I would recommend The Shadow of the Gods, the first book of the Blood Swan Saga, as a great place to jump in. I'm not going to read you the description on this one because it is the second book of a series and I really don't want to spoil anything. What I will tell you is that it is a Norse inspired, Ragnarok inspired fantasy setting with some really interesting characters that I really grew to love. If you want to know more, I do have a link to my review of The Shadow of the Gods in the description, so go and have a look at that and check that out if you want to know a little bit more about this series. But this is what I am most excited for, I think, this year as a new release. Next up is the first book in a new series for author Brian McClellan. This is the first book in the Glass Immortals series and it's called In the Shadow of Lightning. Now Brian McClellan I know he gets a lot of memes, a lot of hate for some of his writing but I actually really enjoyed the Powder Mage trilogy. I really enjoyed the first three books of Powder Mage. I think they were doing relatively well. They weren't groundbreaking fantasy, they weren't incredible. They were sort of interesting and fun fantasy. It's kind of in the vein of Sanderson slightly. In the Shadow of Lightning however will be the first book I've read from McClellan not in the Powder Mage series and so it should be an interesting way to see if I just like that aesthetic and that setting or whether I actually really love McClellan's writing. Again let me give you the description of this one. Demir Grappo is an outcast. He fled a life of wealth and power abandoning his responsibilities as a general, a governor and a son. Now he will live out his days as a grifter, rootless and alone. When his mother is brutally murdered, Demir must return from exile to claim his seat at the head of the family and uncover the truth that got her killed. The very power that keeps civilization turning, Godglass, is running out. Now Demir must find allies, old friends and rivals alike, confront the powerful guild, families who are only interested in making the most of the scraps left at the table, and uncover the invisible hand that threatens the Empire. A war is coming, a war unlike any other, and Demir and his ragtag group of outcasts are the only thing that stands in the way of the end of life as the world knows it. So there you go, going from a standard start to an epic world-changing event, supposedly is what we're getting in this. We're getting that promise of a classical fantasy arc, and we'll see how we go with it, and whether I do enjoy this as much as I did Powder Mage. This one is coming out supposedly on the 21st of June. Next up is scheduled out on the 18th of August. This is another first book in a series by an author that I have enjoyed previously. This is called Babel or The Necessity of Violence and Arcane History of the Oxford Translators Revolution. Wow, that is a mouthful and it is by R.F. Kuang. Now, I really like R.F. Kuang's writing style. I really enjoyed the first couple of books in the Poppy War trilogy. I don't think Burning God landed as well as it could have done, but I am excited to see more of her writing. I enjoy that a lot of her writing is a fantastical take on real events in history, and that's really interesting. I like how she does that. She clearly has a lot of knowledge in history and a lot of expertise in that area, and she clearly likes to write based on those things. So I am excited to see where she goes with this. Again, let's see a description of this one as it's a new series once again. An act of translation is always an act of betrayal. 1828, Robin Swift, orphaned by cholera in Canton, is brought to London by the mysterious Professor Lovell. There he trains for years in Latin, Ancient Greek and Chinese, all in preparation for the day he'll enrol in Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institution of Translation, also known as Babel. Babel is the world's centre of translation and, more importantly, of silverworking. 
the art of manifesting the meaning lost in translation through enchanted silver bars to magical effect. Silver working has made the British Empire unparalleled in power, and Babel's research in foreign languages serves the Empire's quest to colonise everything it encounters. Oxford, the city of dreaming spires, is a fairy tale for Robin, a utopia dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge, but knowledge serves power, and for Robin, a Chinese boy raised in Britain, serving Babel inevitably means betraying his motherland. As his studies progress, Robin finds himself caught between Babel and the shadowy Hermi Society, an organisation dedicated to sabotaging the silver working that supports imperial expansion. When Britain pursues an unjust war with China over silver and opium, Robin must decide. Can powerful institutions be changed from within? Or does revolution always require violence? What is he willing to sacrifice to bring Babel down? Babel, a thematic response to secret history and a tonal response to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, grapples with student revolutions, colonial of assistance, and the use of translation as a tool of empire. Now that, to me, really sounds interesting about translation and about language and about how it's used. It strikes me very much as having a Takes Kalan duology vibe from Arcady Martin, which I adored. I'm not going to lie, I didn't love Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clark, so I'll be interested to see where this fits in that scale. I think I'm going to really enjoy the topic and the themes. I may not enjoy the style though, so we'll see how that goes. And then the last book I am super excited for that's coming out this year is not coming out until the 15th of November, and this is A Lost Metal by Brandon Sanderson. It's book four of Mistborn Era 2, and I am really, really excited for this one as well. As a book four in a sequel series, I'm definitely not going to give you any description or any details about what's happening here, because that's going to be super heavy on spoilers, but I really am excited to see what happens to our protagonists, to see where the world has developed. It sounds like there's going to be quite a time jump from the last book to this book. If you don't know about Mistborn by now, I'm not sure you ever will, but if you are new to fantasy reading, if you are new to more modern fantasy Mistborn is a wonderful series, but I am so excited to see how all these new cosmic connections get weaved in throughout Mistborn Era 2 and how it's going to evolve in the future Mistborn series as well. But there you go. There are the seven books I am super excited for coming out in 2022. I'm sure there'll be many more new releases that I also love, but these are the ones that are jumping out at me currently. Let me know down below what you are excited to read this year, what new releases you are really, really pumped for and are on your pre-order list. And hopefully I'll see you guys again soon.